Hello, I'm Alexandra Coglin, and I'm here in Glyndebourne's newest building, the Production Hub, where the company's talented designers and makers and technicians create the magnificent productions that we see on stage. It's a wonderfully light and airy space, worlds away from the claustrophobic darkness of Janacek's late great masterpiece. Katia Kabanova by Leos Janacek is a devastating portrait of innocence tainted and passion crushed by a hypocritical society. This is musical theatre at its most raw, lyrical and violent. Virtuous and gentle, Katia lives a dull life in a dull provincial town on the river Volga. Trapped in her marriage to the weak Tishon, she is bullied by his cruel and domineering mother, the widow Kabanicha. But when Tishon goes away on business, Katia finds herself drawn into a brief, passionate affair with the outsider Boris, with tragic consequences. It's really one opera where you see a composer who is really aware of uh, the, 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 the theatrical power of its music, because he has this ability to create an atmosphere with the music uh, uh, and to create this, this tension. He has an ability to be very psychological also. He really brings out the dramatic tension of the character. Katya, she tries to survive. She tries to, 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 to be free in this, in this cage, which is this kind of family. And, uh, and all the story for me, the, the main core of the story is this fighting for freedom, this fighting to to try to be free. There's also sort of wild nature framing all of that, isn't there? At the beginning, when, when the libretto starts, we have two characters speaking about nature and they, they introduce you, like in a very good screenplay, this key symbol. They speak about a river. Then we find a way to translate the, 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 the essence of, of the river, the idea of uh, a place, of, of an element which is the liberation somehow of, uh, of, of the character. Katia's an opera that emerges out of personal passion, but also the frustrations of an affair that for Janacek was never actually consummated. And you can feel it in the score, where Janacek's earlier operas are all about ensemble, bringing people together musically. Here it's a lot of monologue, even in the love duets, she sings, then he sings, they very rarely come together. It's a piece about people who are atomized, who are separated, who are unable to come together to communicate with each other. But cutting against that is the wonderful power of this score that comes from nature. There's a real elemental force to Janacek's huge orchestra, whether it's in the storm that brings everything to a climax, or the wonderful episodes with the Volga River at the beginning and the end of the opera. Tying it all together, though, is Janacek's unique approach to word setting. He called it speech melody. When we think about opera, we often have to suspend disbelief. People are repeating things endlessly, or they're extending them, distorting words that we're familiar with. Here, Janacek sets music as if it's everyday speech. It's far closer to theatre than conventional opera. I think it's like drama set to music. I think he in his prime was one of the best dramatists. So when you actually sing some of his work, it's like a play and there happens to be some music there. The reason why language in Janacek's music is so immediate is because he wrote it all in speech rhythm. It's extremely expressive. It's actually very forward in your mouth as a singer. Can you give me an example of that? Yes, well, it's very kind of palatal. So you have lots of di di dias and ti ti tias, and there's actually only one sound which is quite tricky. We could we could try together, shall we? <laughs> it's so if you're going to say sister, the word for sister is sestrichko, which is quite tricky. And in terms of just learning a role in a second language or in, in Czech, which I presume must be your maybe third, fourth, fifth language, what, what's the process you go through to really get inside it? It's at the first kind of challenge you're sat there trying to get your brownie badge in check and you feel a bit like a parrot because the actual sounds are so alien to what you're used to but you get a bit more at home with it 
and the more you learn, there's so many words which come up again and again, kind of operatic language, kind of boje and nevim and ano, you know, hello, God, all that kind of thing. Doesn't do you any good when you go to Prague and try and order a beer, but operatically it's ever so helpful. So you kind of have this kind of palette of expression. You seem really passionate about Katia. I think though for lots of people it's repertoire they don't know very well. How would you describe it to someone who's never seen it before? It's like a film. It's like a movie. There are themes which I think cross the opera stage outside of the opera house. It's about oppression, about community, the chorus. I know that the Glyndebourg chorus are gonna sound glorious. This actual feeling of what you should be doing as a villager, you know, what will they say if they found that I've been cuckolding my wife or husband or, you know, whatever they're getting up to. It's that immediacy which I think we can all resonate with. And not to make it kind of base, but it, it could be Coronation Street sent to music. You know, it's as accessible as that. Janacek was 67 when he composed Katya Kabanova. It was the first of the four late operas that make up this Indian summer of creativity. All of them grew out of a single climactic encounter just a few years earlier. Janacek had met Kamila Stosleva, a married woman some 38 years younger than him, and fallen madly in love with her. It's this sense of illicit passion and desire that fuels all of these four operas. What we see in Katya Kabanova is an opera that is based on a Russian play by Alexander Ostrovsky, which was written in 1859. So Katya, the heroine of the play and of the opera, is this young girl who's stuck in a dreadful marriage. And Janacek, in writing this opera, he's poured so much of his own life experience into this glorious character. He's had this very bitter time with, with his own wife. He meets this, this beautiful girl, Camilla Stoslova, this woman whom he writes 700 letters famously um, during the last years of his life. And I think he's projecting himself and his whole, the whole trajectory of his um, composing career into the, the intensely beautiful music. He's conveying a lot of that Russian original, but he's making it much more universal. Brineborn's music director, Robin Ticciati, conducts a brand new production by Damiano Michieletto. Katerina Nezhikova sings the title role with British tenors, Nikki Spence and David Butt-Philip as her two rival lovers. Mm -hmm. 